Psalm 19, 7 to 10, it really struck me because of the, the writer's love, even the losing of himself in the Word of God. Psalm, Psalm 19, 7 to 10 says, The law of the Lord. We often associate the law with quite a dry experience of, of the written Word of God. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy. I love this. Making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are good, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm. And I, you know, I look at I look at these scriptures, and you know, the commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. I think of Matthew six twenty three. Jesus said, "The eyes are the lamp of the body, and he whose eyes are good, the whole the whole body is full of light. But when the eyes are are, are dark, the whole body is full of darkness. And how great is that darkness? The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light." to the eyes. You know, the, these writers, if you, this is Psalm 19, 7 to 10, but if you look through Psalm 119, and actually in so many places, there's a delight. There, it, it was like, you know, an escapist kind of movie. I mean, these people would dwell on the written holy word, and they would, they would delight in it. It, it was perfect. It, precepts are good, bringing joy to the heart. It, the commands are radiant, putting putting light in the eyes. I mean, these people gazed on the Holy Word and they would lose themselves in it. When you go to bed, do you, do you meditate on the law of the Lord? Psalm 1 says that, Blessed is man who does not stand on the path of sitters, sit in the seat of Mark, but his delight is in the law. And on the law he meditates day and night. Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 5, famous verses. We have uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then it goes on to say, in, in verses 6 to 7, it says to, to impress these laws on your children, to speak of them when you're walking, to teach them when you're sitting down, when you're laying down. So, you know, there was this, um, there was this understanding, there was this comfort that people associated with hearing and meditating on scriptures. Now, this, this is what really struck me, and this isn't an admonition to get in the Word and meditate on it. Here's, here's what I suspect. Listen, if you believe in God through Jesus Christ, the Word does delight you. It, it, it says that this passage, Psalm 19, 7 to 10, towards the end, it says, you know, the fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever, and, that, and then it says, it says uh, these decrees and these statutes, it refers to all of these, and it says, it says they are sweeter than honey, and they are more precious than gold. Um, First Peter 1 Peter 1.7 says, refers to your faith being more precious than gold. So all of a sudden we have this, this sense of, of the Spirit of God that is spoken in, and we see through the history of the Old Testament the, the written words of, of, of the law were regarded as God-breathed. And we have that also in 2 Timothy 3.16, Hebrew 4.12. I mean, the sense of that which is the Word of God being immovable, God-inspired, God-breathed. Remember in Matthew uh, 4, 1 to 11, when, when the devil was tempting Jesus, the devil was quoting Scripture. He quotes Psalm 91. Jesus comes back at him with Deuteronomy 8.3, Deuteronomy 6 something. I mean, Jesus is leaning on the written and powerful, inspired word of, of God contained in Deuteronomy. Jesus, the living word, the living word, and the word became flesh, John 1.14. He isn't relying on his own thoughts. He, he's drawing on scriptures that are written and God inspired. In the Old Testament, Jesus often quoted scripture. John 10, 34, he's quoting Psalm uh, 82, 6. Uh, Luke 
20, 17 to 18. Jesus is quoting Psalm 118, 22. There's a lot of them. Jesus quoting from the scriptures and leaning on the scriptures, but they all had an express purpose. 2 Timothy 3, 15 says, he refers to Timothy knowing the scriptures from infancy, making him wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus in John 5, 39 to 40, he, he turns to the Pharisees and says, you search the scriptures because in them you think you possess eternal life, but you refuse to come to me and have life. The scriptures are God breathed, but even the devil can quote them, Matthew 4. So there's, there's a, a requirement of bringing our faith in God to the scriptures and for these scriptures to make us wise for salvation. How? Through faith in Jesus Christ. If your knowledge of scriptures does not lead you to faith in Jesus Christ, then they are not uh, doing what they're supposed to be doing in and through your soul. And they can even be misused. The devil himself, masquerading as an angel of light, 2 Corinthians 11, 14, he can quote Psalm 91. And when the scriptures come out of his mouth, they are misguided and they are misguiding. When they come out of Jesus' mouth, and hopefully from your heart and faith, they come in the power of God. And so it's not just knowing scriptures, John 5, 39 to 40. It's knowing the scriptures and the power of God, as Jesus said in Matthew 22, 29, to the Sadducees. He said, you're in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. They, they got to go together. But here's, here's what I would defer to you. Scriptures are inspired by God. If you find yourself coming across a, a verse from scripture and you find yourself, it just drips on you like honey. Or, or it suddenly feels more precious and bright to you than gold. That's because it is. Go with that. Meditate on it. Drink it in. That is the power of the inspired scriptures of God. Don't, don't shirk it. Don't park that revelation and that inspiration and kind of get back to what's real. No. Go with that. Jesus said, I am the door. John 10, 9. He who enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find good pasture. John 7, 37, 38. He who believes in me, streams of living water will flow from within him. If you experience that, meditating on scriptures, that's because it's what it's meant to do. Don't, don't think of it as a blip or almost fear the experience of the Holy Spirit bringing to life the powerful, honey-dripping, gold-shimmering scriptures and the Spirit of God that comes through. That is correct. Enjoy it. God bless you.